when I was around eight years old, we moved into a new house. It wasn't old, but it was a fairly new built house, either maybe built around the 60s. Everyone got their own room, and this was the first time I was on my own. I thought I was a big shot. A little background on myself. I would like to call myself somewhat sensitive ever since I was a child. I could always feel the sense of something or someone around when no one else could. Fast forward to when I was nine. It was the first year in the house. I could feel the presence of something in there, but I never really thought anything of it, considering it wasn't too negative. There were three rooms that I didn't really like being in, because the energy felt somewhat dark. The basement, the bathroom, and the attic. I didn't mind being in the basement when I had friends over here, but when I was alone, I couldn't be in there for more than five minutes without getting the feeling like I was being watched. In the bathroom was a cabinet that was very deep. You could literally fit two grown men in there. I never understood why it was so big. But I didn't feel right and I wouldn't often feel drawn to just look inside and stare for a few minutes, and I would get a very uneasy feeling. The attic, on the other hand, was a different story. I never ever opened it. I kept the door shut at all times. Something was up there and it didn't want company. One night, I was laying in bed. It was around 2.45 in the morning when I heard footsteps in the hallway. I assumed it was just one of my brothers coming home from a night out with friends. My bedroom door was open so I looked to see if anyone was walking around. I stared for about what seemed like 10 minutes and no one went by. I got scared so I decided to wait it out. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I thought I saw the shape of a human in the corner of my bedroom. I thought that it was just my eyes playing tricks on me, so I tried to turn over and go back to sleep, but I felt like I was being watched. Now, in a nine-year-old's mind, it's the boogeyman, so I quickly hopped out of my bed and tried to run into my mom's room. Her room was only two doors down from mine. In order to walk out of my room, you would have to pass a wall that was somewhat slanted. In order to do this, you would have to walk sideways. As I did this, I felt two hands pressed down on my shoulders. I froze in fear. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream. I was a prisoner to my own body. Then all of a sudden, the hair in the back of my neck stood up. In my ear, clear as day, I heard heavy breathing. It didn't sound human. My eyes widened, and then I felt the pressure lift off of me. I could move again. I ran so fast on the small hallway into my mother's bed. That whole night, I kept hearing someone walking back and forth in the hallway, but I refused to look through the doorway. When I tell you that, I didn't sleep well that night. I mean, I didn't sleep that week. The next morning, I walked into the hallway and just so happened to look up. The door to the attic was open. I asked mom if she was up in the attic and she said that there is no reason that it should have been open. My stomach felt like it was in my throat. I knew what was ever in that attic was in my bedroom the night before, just watching me. I'm thankful that I got up out of bed when I did, because if I didn't, I don't want to think what would have happened. I'm 22 now and I still can remember that night as if it were yesterday, and I still can't sleep with the lights off. So, to whoever or whatever grabbed my shoulders that night, stay away from me. I was 11 at the time and living in a nice suburban area. We had recently moved into this house that my parents had built and it was our first home, versus renting a house in a sketchy area. It was a very nice neighborhood. The whole family made friends quickly with a lot of the neighbors, but especially the one three doors down. They had a daughter my age, and I'm a male by the way, and a daughter five years younger which was the same age as my sister. My parents got along well and we began hanging out quite a bit, for barbecues at their house or parties at ours. Friendships were formed quickly and it seemed to be very strong. After a year or so, 
I started realizing things weren't what they seemed. I remember seeing police cars at their house a few times in the evenings, and when I would ask my parents what was going on, it was always nothing, just a checking in on them type of answers. I was no genius, but at 11, that didn't add up. Why did the cops just come and check up on us? One day, I'm at their house playing and hanging out, and the daughter goes across the street to get another mutual friend, which left myself and the father alone in the house. This was really no big deal, as it had happened before. But then he approached me and just seemed off. I still don't know what made me feel this way, but I was very uncomfortable and started thinking about leaving. About five minutes later, he tells me that he has something cool to show me. I don't remember what it was, but I think it was something about baseball cards, which I was very fond of. I excitedly started following him. He pulled the attic ladder down and asked me to follow him, which I did without hesitation at first. And then something happened and I still can't process what it was. He was ahead of me on the ladder and when he looked back to help me into the attic, there was something off. Something about his eyes, his face, his grin. It wasn't right. It looked evil. I can still see it as clear as day and can't recognize exactly what it was that set my alarms off. Whatever it was, it was plenty. Because I jumped off the ladder and ran out of the door. I sprinted all the way home. And I was choking back tears when I busted it through my front door. Mom was there when I came through and could see that I was obviously out of sorts and immediately started calming me down. As I came to my senses, I explained what happened. My mom was concerned with how scared I was but mostly brushed it off to me being scared, young, and silly. I kid you not. That same exact night, I was awoken up at around 3 a.m., it was my mom sitting on my bed, and as I awoke, she held me like a baby. I remember how she smelled and how tightly she held me, and I remember her tears hitting my cheek. Eventually, I saw out the window to the neighbor's house. It was surrounded by police and fire trucks. The neighbor's dad had killed himself and his daughter in the attic after his standoff with the police. There isn't a doubt on my mind, nor my mother's, that that would have been me if I had made it into the attic. I still get chills thinking about it. Okay, so around 9 or 10 years ago, I was living with my mom, dad, and older sister in an oldish house and a very small village. Like, when I say small, I mean its only main feature was a small church and a few scattered houses occupied mostly by very old people. At the time, it was the summer, so I wasn't at school or anything, and since we were far in the middle of nowhere, I spent most of that time at home, glued to one screen or another. The usual routine was I would wake up at around 10 or 11. By this point, mom, dad, and my sister had all left for work, so I had the house for myself. I would go downstairs and make some toast and watch some random stuff on TV for around an hour before heading back to my room to continue with whatever game I was grinding through that particular day. The usual habits of a 17-year-old guy cut off from the world by many, many fields. I should give a quick rundown of our house. It was an older cottage with two rooms upstairs, mine and my sister's and everything else downstairs. As you walk up the stairs, you got to a very small landing and could go either left to my room or immediately right to my sister's. Basically, the way that this was laid out was that I could sit in my room with the door open, and my sister's room is directly opposite. I should also mention that these ceilings in both our bedrooms were slanted. We were basically in a large attic where the roof slanted down. Because of where the slant and not the wall, we had a crawl space that ran the length of the house on either side of the rooms, both with a small door to access them. They were mostly used for storing normal attic stuff, like Christmas decorations and old, forgotten toys. The doors to these were thin little things, about four feet tall with a small handle on the outside. This is important because turning these tiny doorknobs opened them, but only from the outside. 
If the door was pushed shut with you inside, there was a no way back out. I discovered this myself on more than one occasion. The door on my side ran along my room, and along one wall in my sister's room, and terrors ran along the other side along my room. This space was not very big. You had to crouch to stand in it, and most of the time that you were in there, you were crawling on hands and knees. This is all important later, I promise. Anyway, this one morning, I'm awoken to a familiar noise. Some sort of a small creature rustling around in the crawl space on my sister's side. I could hear this because my bed was against the wall that ran along it. Not an unusual sound. Living in the countryside, we had mice almost constantly, and pretty much had the run of the storage spaces, no matter how many traps were put down. I thought nothing of it and got up and went off to begin my morning ritual of toast and television. The first odd thing I noticed was while watching TV, I could hear movement upstairs. My sister's room was directly above the living room so I assumed she had just not gone to work that day for whatever reason and continued eating. Around an hour or so later, I went back upstairs and I booted up my PC. And as I was waiting, I turned around to my open door and faced my sister's closed one and realized that it was late in the day and she had not yet left her room. An odd thing since she normally parked up on the sofa in the living room on her days off and didn't move until our parents returned. We're not the most active family. I started to think that maybe she was at work and I had imagined the noise from upstairs. But as I mused this, I noticed the crack of light at the bottom of her door as a shadow passed by it. Okay, so there's definitely someone in there. So, it must be her, right? I once again pushed it from my mind and went back to my PC. More time passed and the thought came back to me. Why would she be at home but not leave? She only has a small television in her room and no books. So what had she been doing in there all day? I glanced back around and again saw a shadow under the door. She was still moving around in there, so what was up? I finally decided to go knock on her door. I knocked a few times and said her name. No answer. Weird, maybe she had headphones on or something. I knocked a bit harder again and said her name again, but louder. No answer. Alright, I thought, screw this. I'm just going to go in, so I cracked the door open and peered around. I found an empty room. No one inside at all. Feeling slightly confused, but better that it was just my imagination. I stepped in properly and looked around and saw something that made me full-on panic. Near the bottom of her little door leading to the crawl space, there was a small hole that the mice had made to get in and out at the bottom. Really small, but just big enough to fit half of your hand through. There, coming through that hole, were four fingers, holding the door shut from the inside. At first I thought, no, it can't be fingers, don't be stupid, until I watched them slowly creep back through the hole into the crawl space. I lost my crap, very quietly though I might add. I backed out of the room, shutting the door behind me and ran to my room. Being the stupid teenager I was, I grabbed what might be the most imposing weapon that I could find. A fake Winchester rifle cap gun I got from Disneyland a few years back. I figured that if whoever was hiding in that bedroom didn't believe it was a real firearm, I could at least hit them with it. I ran off downstairs to where my dogs were on the far side of the house and called my mom who worked about only five minutes away from where we lived. She told me to stay put and that her and her manager were on their way. And this time, I had made a small upgrade from my fake plastic rifle to one of my dad's golf clubs. I felt much better with that. Finally, my mom and her boss, John, turned up and I tell them everything leading up to this point. They say okay and that we're all set off upstairs to investigate. Me rather, unheroically, bringing up the rear with my golf club. We get into my sister's room and I point to the door. 
I'll never know if my mom is just hard as nails or massively stupid. But while John and I watch, she marches over to the door, yanks it open and sticks her head in. A moment passes while she looks left and right and John and I are preparing to yank her back from the clutches of the psycho hobo murderer hiding in there before she shouts. Chris, what the heck are you doing in there? Get out. A small amount of backstory. Chris was my sister's boyfriend. Unbeknownst to me, the night before, my dad had asked Chris to leave as he had stayed with us for around five days at this point. He said sure. That's cool and as far as my mom and dad knew, he had headed home. What really happened was instead of leaving, him and my sister had planned to make it seem like he had left and then he could stay another night. He then would wake up before my mom shouted my sister up for work, like she did every morning, and he would hide in the crawl space and sleep there, until everyone had left for the day. One small hitch in the plan was that, they didn't think of was, you guessed it, me. They had forgotten that I was home, and conveniently sat directly opposite the only exit for most of the day, so he was pretty much trapped. When I knocked, he had hid himself behind the door and held it shut to prevent being locked in. Anyway, my mom swiftly told him to get the heck out and to not come back. Sadly, this was not the last time we saw the guy. As it turned out, he had stolen quite a bit of money from my sister's room while he had been hiding out. And then, because my sister makes terrible decisions, got her pregnant and proceeded to smash windows trying to get at her and the baby around a year later. For a while, we lived in the same city when I went to university, and he was spending time at the prison there for stabbing someone in a completely different town. He's definitely a super guy. Oh, and a small topper to all of this. As I had mentioned earlier, the only rooms upstairs are mine and my sister's bedrooms. He had been in there for close to 14 hours with no access to a toilet. But no worry for this guy, because he had a lot of empty bottles to piss in, which he kindly left behind for us to all clean up. And finally, around a year later as mom was getting the Christmas decorations out, which were at the far back of the storage space, she found a small bag filled with crap. I should mention, where she found it is exactly next to where my bed is on the other side of the wall. The rustling that woke me up that day. It was him, hiding his crap amongst our tinsel and tree. So, a sister's baby daddy hid in our crawl space and used it as a private bathroom. That's not me, yeah. This is actually my friend's story, but I was almost a daily guest at her house, so I think I might be able to tell it like she would. She lived at her parents' house. We were around 18 years old, and they had just moved into a big house from a small apartment. They had a dog who was extremely well-behaved, but sometimes in the middle of the night, he would start growling and barking. One early morning, my friend's dad followed the dog to the kitchen where he saw a young man trying to get in through the window. The man got away before the police got there, but the growling and barking didn't stop. And sometimes, we could all hear weird sounds. Like someone was walking around on the roof of our house or something. Her dad would often have to look up into the attic and would see nothing, so he blamed those sounds on the weather. Changes in the heat or cold and humidity making the wood crack. This went on for a few years. A few nights a week, the dog would growl and they would hear what sounded like footsteps. I spent some nights there and one time my friend woke me up just to make me listen. Years later and a few years after my friend moved out from her parents' place, her dad was doing something in the attic when he found a tiny little door in the far corner. He had never noticed it before because this corner of the attic was really dark. He opened the tiny little door and what he saw on the beam of his flashlight really freaked everyone out. He saw a dirty mattress, some burnt out candles and candy wrappers. 
It's been years since she had told me about what her father saw, but I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Someone had actually been living in their attic. Maybe it was the guy who tried to climb in through the window.